Welcome to Focus on Creativity, where we talk about creativity. Enjoy. Hi, I'm Chara Crail, and this is Focus on Creativity. I'm a photographer, an artist, and a muse. And today, we are talking to Jill Wagner. I'm very excited. Jill Wagner is a photographer. She's a photojournalist. She's an instructional assistant. And you know one of the things that I think is particularly interesting is she is all about animals, too. Photographing them, working with them. And here's a secret. She's actually hauling horses right after this call so she can go off and go riding today. And I think that is so cool. So welcome, Jill. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> A pleasure. I'm glad you're joining in the conversation about creativity. And because you do so many interesting things, I thought um, I would love to hear your perspective on creativity, what it means to you, how you process. Um, it's, I'm more about going out into the environment and just photographing what I see. And I look for different perspectives of things that we miss with a naked eye. Um, uh, I find animals very inspiring uh, when I'm out with them. And I mean, when you see a horse, you look at it, but how often do you get to go up and actually see its lips or the hair on its lips or hmm. the, the detail in their eyes? Their eyes are incredible. They, they remind me, not that I've ever been to the Grand Canyon, but they remind me of the pictures of Grand Canyon, all the, the, the detail in them. Well, that's fascinating. Uh, yeah, and you just don't s normally get to see huh. them. So you actually you actually see the Grand Canyon in the horse's eyes, mm -hmm. in a sense. Tell yeah. me more about that. That's fascinating. You see, um, I see other things in pictures when I shoot them and uh, or photograph them. Uh, when I go out and I have a, a private shoot and a client has me photograph their dog or their, their horse or something, I ask them what's special to them about the horse. Um, what's special, what is it that touches you about your animal? And then as I go through, I shoot, you know, the overall scene of the horse and the environment, but I try to go up and one client of mine, she says, I love her lips. Hmm. And um, she was an Appaloosa. She was 28 years old. And so I went in and I focused on photographing her lips and you could see all the detail and the wrinkles and stuff. And it was like being there again. And, um, Unfortunately, her mom lost, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, had to put her down because they don't live forever, unfortunately. But that is the one thing she said that she could look at that picture mm. and feel her and sense her and stuff. And that's what I'm trying to go for. Yeah, and it reminds me of, it, I, I mean, I totally heard the photojournalist in you. It may not, you know, when we think of photojournalism, we often think about, you know, hard news and, and yeah. events and that kind of thing. And yet you're taking your sensibilities about photojournalism to something at a very local, very personal level mm -hmm. for people. Well, I feel that um, photojournalism is, to be a photojournalist is a very unique uh, individual to be able to do it. It's more than portraiture, and it's not just uh, being a journalist. You, it, to me, the way I explain to my students is it's a combination of the two. And you have to be a, a good steward of the information that you're capturing by telling the truth and capturing all the facts. But you also want to capture your subjects that tells a story of whatever it is that you're photographing. Um, as important as the writing is, the artwork for me to get me to pick up a paper and read it, it has to have compelling artwork. Hmm. So um, if you can pull me in and draw me in with an interesting angle um, with the photo, I, the first thing I do is look at the photo and then I read the, the cut line and then I will go in and read the story. Yeah. And so I feel like as a photojournalist, that's something that you need to do and, and put yourself in the place where uh, the viewers won't be like in the middle of a protest or something like that. Um, right. You got to make them feel like they're there. Exactly. It's the same with sports. You know, um, what I've experienced with beginning students, um, they shoot a lot of sports going away from the camera. And so I, I try to show them a lot of pictures of you mm. coming into the camera. You want your subject to be able to feel like they're there. And um, it takes a little bit of training your eye, but it's pretty amazing when the students catch on to it. And yeah. You know? Yeah. 
So it's kind of the same, I guess I carry that same philosophy forward with photojournalism as I do with but it really is about telling stories and documenting life around me yeah. and, and history. You know, like yeah. when there's a big protest or a big election and you're photographing Trump or you're photographing, like I remember the first um, polit big politician I shot was uh, Gray Davis and Senator McCain. And I felt like I was doc I was capturing living history right then and there. Oh, you are. And you were at the time. Absolutely. And that's exciting to me. That yeah. is really exciting. You know, my camera's taken me places I otherwise would have never have gone. What, so, tell, tell us about one. I'd be really interested. Um, well, I was a staff photographer and advertising photographer for News and Review for five years. Mm -hmm. And, um, oh, gosh. Um, one shoot, I got to go out with uh, the writer uh, Cosmo Garvin, and it was the tunnels under Sacramento. Oh, yeah, I've never because seen that. The, because it was flooded. Well, we got to go into places that um, aren't normally accessible mm -hmm. by the public. And um, as creepy as it was down there, <laughs> it sound quirky, but I swear it was like stepping back in time. And it was just short of hearing, you know, boots walking on the, <laughs> the sound and horses lips flapping. And it was oh really, really neat to go down and, and see and experience that. Yeah. So, wow. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I got to travel through that. And another time I went up, I think it was KFBK's, um, do you remember the airplane travel, not travel, uh, traffic guy? Oh, yes, absolutely. I got to go up in the airplane with him, <gasps> and I'm mortified of heights. Oh, my goodness, that takes a lot of courage. <laughs> yeah, well, we get into this little plane, and it's a little two-door plane. And it has a joystick in front of me. <laughs> and I get in and I'm like, I couldn't even turn around. I was like, oh, I better get a different lens. And I couldn't even turn around and get the lens out of the back, little back seat. And as we're going down the, uh, the script to take off, my door is chattering. And I can hear the, I can see the wheels and the gap. And all I could tell myself was, okay, it's no different than being on the back of a motorcycle. <laughs> Relax. When I got up there, it was amazing. I did oh. Oh, how wonderful. Well, good for you. Yeah, so that's, those are the, the exciting things. You Some can. highlights. Yeah. Well, it reminds me, I, I'm, I'm going to kind of go back to the whole idea of creative process again, and that you don't, creative process can change for any given situation that you're in, I would think. Or maybe you just kind of like having a mental tool bag mm -hmm. in a sense of what do I need to pull out in this moment to do whatever it is that I need to do next. So t talk a little bit about your creative process. And I don't even know it from what situation, but maybe there are some sort of common things that you do. Um, I have, uh, I've, I've put a lot of thought to it. I'm not a real technical, you know, artist. Mm -hmm. I shoot more from the heart and the gut. Um, over the years, I have come to understand that I usually keep the sun at a 45 degree <laughs> on one of my shoulders. Yeah. I noticed that when from shooting rodeo and stuff like that. Hmm. Um, so when I go into a scene or a situation, um, the only thing that's really consistent is your camera, and the rest is your experience in shooting it and how to make it interesting. And that comes with light. And for me, it's light and angles. So light is your process. Yeah. How, I mean, firstly, how comes, yeah, how it comes off of the subject. Yeah. Um, if it's too hard of a shadow. Uh, um, and then that leads me into, I try to find a, a, a nice angle of lighting on them to where it's not harsh or anything. And then I, I, I don't consciously do it, but after I look at the photos, I can see the leading lines. I, for some reason, am naturally drawn to triangles. Hmm. Um, I never realized that until I was getting ready for a show and I had a colleague of mine go, please come help me figure out which pictures to, I only need 10 and let me, you know, we edit them. And he's looking at my body of work and he goes, interesting. And I said, what? And he says, you really have a thing for triangles. And, <laughs> and I was like, I never noticed. Interesting. Definitely. But, yeah. So part of my, I, I don't put a whole lot of thought into it other than it's more emotional. Yeah. Well, you know, it, what that reminds me of is the notion of people 
I actually asked some students recently about if they if they recognize their own style, if they if they even understood that they had a style. Mm-hmm. And I, that's what you're reminding me about. How there is a moment where you discover you have a style because we may not always have one. I think there is some level of that, um, but it may not be finely honed. Right? We may not be aware of it at the level that we will get to ultimately when we feel the full power and confidence, you know, in the work that we do. And so I'm kind of hearing that a little bit, you know, it's like a discovery, a self-discovery. Well, and that's another thing about, um, you know, with a camera is I discover a lot about myself. And um, I discover a lot about myself through the subjects that I photograph and work with and, and, um, and just the interaction with people. To me, a camera and photographing is about relationships. And my creative process about that, of that is connecting with somebody or my subject, whatever it might be. It might be just photographing a you know, product shot. I have to connect with it and feel it in order to keep going forward. And I can feel it when I'm photographing. If I'm not connecting, I'm like, okay, let's go try this. Yeah. You know, and it really does reflect in my work. So, um, and I try to explain that to my students that kind of look at me a little, what? But <laughs> I'll share with you a story. I took a class out at a CRC, because mm-hmm. I'm at River College. It was with Bill Santos. And I remember, um, as a student, you're so finite on what is your lighting ratio and stuff like that. <laughs> and, um, you know, your light meter and everything. Well, apparently Bill doesn't at that time doesn't shoot with a light meter. He, and he, we're like, what ratio? And I'm like, we're sitting there with bated breath to write down every note because he's, he's a phenomenal photographer. And he goes, I go for the lighting, the emotional, the, emotional lighting quality or something like that. And I remember looking at my classmate and going, what was that? Right. I, um, you know, 15, 20 years later, I get what he's saying. Yeah, I get it. It's content versus technical. What are we seeing as opposed to what are we thinking about in order to make this technically what it, you know, what we think it should be as opposed to feeling what it is and expressing it. Yeah. For me, the, the creative process is the, the capturing of it and then the technical side of it for me becomes, it comes along in the post process. Yeah. You know, um, I, I mean, you want to get it. You, you still want to get it in camera, right? You don't want to overexpose or underexpose. You want to at least be well within range. Exactly. Goodness gracious. Yeah. No, I mean, for good exposure and stuff yeah. like that. But yeah. and when I say technical, I guess I don't overthink it. Um, I try not to overthink my, my process too much. I just go out and, and, feel it and shoot it. Yeah, no, I totally get that. Because how do you anticipate something when you're worried about your technical the whole time? You have to just have that down so that when you're actually watching something and seeing how it moves and where it is and how the light falls and all those different things that come in together, that is where you're capturing it, the legacy of it, right? The history of it, capturing the moment that it's happening right now. Very, very well said. I'm not a wordsmith at all. Oh, God. Well, thank you. (laughs) Because that is, in a lot of ways, that is, that is what it is. Yeah. um, I mean, you have to have the technical side for exposure and and the basics. But if I was to sit there and go, okay, I need a 45 degree angle here and I need a lighting ratio of two to one. It's, it's left brain, right brain. Well, that's the studio person. That's the person who's got something that he can just pose within an inch of its life, like some inanimate object, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. That, and they, they need that. That is a very specific kind of a person. But yeah, when it comes to photojournalism and capturing life and things that move, oh my gosh, what a different animal, as it yeah, were. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I've noticed that um, like landscape photographers, uh, fine art photographers will set up their cameras like at the lowest ISO and they're all about grain and detail. And as a photojournalist, if I had set my, kept my camera at the lowest ISO, that would have been suicide because I've yet to go into a courtroom and um, A, been able to use a flash and uh, B, be able to shoot anything at a hundred ISO. So it wouldn't happen. It wouldn't happen. Maybe with your iPhone. <laughs> yeah. But not with a camera. Not with like, a real yeah. camera. 
Yeah. So it, it is a different, um, like you say, it is a different animal. And the thing, the way that animals tie into uh, my style of, I was told that I have a, a photojournalistic style is it's about documenting life around me. And I love action. I love anything that moves. And um, that's why I enjoy, enjoy shooting rodeo. That's why I love shooting um, horse shows, you know, horses in action, because even though you can see a bull jumping and bucking and everything, you miss so much of it um, with your naked eye. It's when you can uh, shoot it with a still camera or slow motion. I would mm. really love to get into the slow motion video because there's so much that you miss that's going on there. Oh, interesting. That allows you to, puts, puts you right there in the center of it. So, um, you know, I, uh, I'm continually the, the student of, of my craft. And um, I tell my students all the time, if I ever get to a point where I feel like I know everything, then it's time to put down the camera. Uh, yeah, <laughs> because I don't think we ever do. And I don't think we ever can. Yeah, exactly. Because even the, with the digital side of it now, there's so much more that you can do with your, your images. I mean, look at all the beautiful artwork that you do. Well, thank you. Well, I am very you're very welcome and it's it's very well you know deserved because uh your artwork is very inspiring you know i i love seeing your stuff and and um and then the metal stuff work that you do oh i love doing that stuff that's that's you know my my doodling on metal i do love yeah. doing that yes. that's you know um i wish i had i was 20 years younger and where digital is now because there's just so much more i want to learn and I'm already, you know, 52. So <laughs> you learn, but there's just doesn't seem to be enough time. I don't learn as fast. There's so much. There's so much. It's capturing lightning in a bottle. You know, you yeah. just find the thing that you're the most interested in and just go for it as best you can. Because I'm having the same experience. Like, oh, I want to do this. Oh, I want to do that too. Oh my gosh, there's so many amazing things, you know. And, and that's why I have so much fun with my iPhone. I mean, it's no secret. I'm, I'm you know, obsessed with my iPhone. <laughs> And yet, I'm still going out and shooting things. You know, I still got two assignments today, and they're with a real camera and the whole deal. So it's just, you know, it's a fascinating, interesting life. And luckily, we get to do it, you know, now in this time, in this day, in this realm where there's so much opportunity. It's very exciting. Oh, very much so. I mean, I'm thankful that I, I, I came up through film, the era of film. I think it, it made me, it's more grounding as a <laughs> And an artist. Yeah. Well, don't you love telling people, yeah, back in my day, I used I to have the process. You feel like you're telling somebody that story about walking three miles to school in the snow, you know? Oh, exactly. <laughs> I always some of the students, I said, you know what? I'll get a film camera and you can shoot a roll of film. You can soup it in black. Oh, and black. nobody wants yeah. to do that. When I start breaking it down, they're like, okay, I'll quit complaining about having to work my photos and photos. Yeah, but the dark room was so magical, was it not? Absolutely. My, um, it's interesting when I photographed, when I had a studio, I like to photograph the jazz. Um, I mean, excuse me, the blues. But when it came to printing, I like to print my pictures in a dark room like at 10 o'clock on to sometimes 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. And it would right. be jazz. It's but hypnotic. Yeah, and watching your pictures come up in the yep. in, in the solutions and and um and and then you still don't exactly if you're printing on paper you don't know exactly if you're going to get just the right tone until it dries out right you know and um what yeah a process. there was something about um a more simplified it was more work but it, it seemed more simplified to me I do miss photography where. You had a camera body, a lens, and the thing that changed was the film. Yeah. And you selected the film according to your subject and what you wanted to yeah. um, capture with it. And it's like when I used to photograph a lot of rodeo, I found that Fuji did better with horses because it's blues, purple. It's, it's cool oh, tone. that makes sense. So, um, and then uh, my warm tones, you know, of course, were more for the portraiture and stuff like that and things that I wanted warmer uh, tones of, of whatever I'm going to be shooting. Um, but nowadays with digital, 
um, it's not just a camera body and a lens anymore. It's like if you bump one setting on the back of your camera and you're not aware that you did it, you can really mess yourself up. <laughs> you know? Unless you're paying attention, you know, yeah. just checking in on yourself every now and then. Yeah, that could be problematic. Yeah, well, I'm working with new students, you know, students coming in, I just battle with them on the exposure. They're curious, and that's what I want them to be is curious, you know. Yeah. I always tell them, stay curious and keep exploring. Yeah, I like that. But when you change a setting, immediately go back and set it back. So exposure compensation uh, settings have been a challenge this semester. Oh, I don't even use those. But yeah, I'm not going to tell you what I do. Yeah. <laughs> We're not well, good. That's part of the, the creative process as to how to get to where you want to go. Everybody does it differently. Yeah, until you know. So you just have to experiment until you know what your way is, like yeah. in Photoshop. And we're not, we're not going to have any kind of Maybe. long conversation about that. But in Photoshop, there might be 10 different ways to do any given thing, and you're going to find your favorite way. And then Absolutely. that's how it's done, right? And, and it's okay. It's okay that there's lots of ways because that becomes, again, you know, we sort of embrace that idea of, you know, what's my style? What's how I do it? You know, and, and again, going out with that confidence of this is what I do. What exactly. you do is fine because it's what you do. But what I do is this, and I'm going to go forward and be my most unique and original self. And I love that. Absolutely. That's what makes, that's why you could have 30 different, or 30 photographers in a room and, or go out and shoot the same subject and come back with 30 different images because Completely. of their style and their own creative process. Isn't that fascinating? Absolutely. Yeah. That's, that is the crux of what I love, why I love what I do. Hmm. Well, I love that. Yeah, I love that you came on and talked to me. Thank you so much. I, I think I might have interrupted you there. Was there oh, some? No, I was just going to say that's that is what I love about, you know, photography and, and uh, it allows me to express myself. I'm not real good with words in terms of expressing, but the photography gives me another voice without having to say any words. Oh, I love that. Thank you. That's kind of perfect, actually. Photography gives you another voice without having to say any words. Yeah, that is what our visual stuff does. Okay. Thank you, Jill. What a beautiful way to complete here. Oh, my gosh. You're well, very Thank you for having me. Yeah, it was a great conversation. Okay, good. So it makes me want to go to your website. So if I want to and anybody wants to, how do we find you? Um, I have a website called Wag Time Photo. <laughs> Yeah, a play off of my name and, and the dog thing. Um, it's still, uh, we're adding more photos to it and stuff. It's just getting revamped um, or actually going up. Uh, and then I do have jillwagner.com uh, uh, as well. Okay. It's funny because when I do my jillwagner.com, I, I used to not have any dog photos on it, and people would be like, oh, you, you photograph animals? And then um, I talk to animal people because I shoot a lot of dog shows or I used to. They're like, oh, you do portraiture? <laughs> so I know. Having yeah. different websites kind of help, but I have a little bit of overlapping. Yeah. So, yeah. Or that or you can find me on Facebook. Okay. Awesome. Um, all right, Jill. Thank you again. Well done. You're very welcome. And thank you again. <laughs>